Hello guys and gals, me Mudahar, and welcome to another episode of Deep Web Browsing, Dank Web Browsing, whatever you want to call it. The series where we take a look at the uh, side of the internet that's a little too dank for regular viewing. If our records are correct, this is episode 110, 10 episodes into the 100 to uh, 200 category. What are we going to find today? As always, it's going to be randomized. We don't really have a set thing. Hopefully things thematically kick in, but uh, you know, whatever kicks in, we're going to have a good old time, chill back, end the week, and see some dank stuff on the internet. That being said, sit back, relax, let's go to our very first website. That was like Navy SEAL level intro, man. Like, I was, that, that was actually the best one done so far. And I always comment on that, but I am so critical of those intros. That was actually the one time I did it. First episode ever where I didn't have to do like double, triple takes. That was good. Welcome to the TMF Incorporated, the common purpose of all the TerraSem Movement Foundation TMF projects. Let me actually move this a little bit here. Uh, to investigate the TerraSem hypotheses that state that the conscious analog of a person may be created by combining sufficient, de sufficiently detailed data about the person, a mind file, using future consciousness software or mindware. That was the first time I've heard about it, mind life and mindware. You know, I've heard of software, hardware, malware, ransomware, en encrypted wear, whatever the fuck wear you wanted to do. All right, and number two, this is the second part, that such a conscious analog can be downloaded into a biological and nanotechnological body to provide life experience comparable to those to a typically birthed human. Now, before we continue on, I've actually heard about this stuff before. If y'all haven't been, if y'all, if y'all haven't been following this later, where did that south come out of for me? What the fuck? That's weird. Interesting. But uh, if y'all haven't, if you, oh my god, what happened? If if you all haven't been following, basically, uh, there is this project I heard of a long time ago. I think I mentioned in the deep web series way before was that there's something called the Avatar Project, where like I think it's in Russia where by, like, 2050, they're planning to move, like, consciousness into digital forms. Like, people, it's basically a way to have immortality, except that we actually die, but our consciousness moves on into another, like, type of, uh, into, 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 like, a program or maybe into a bot or something like that. Like, you won't, you'll die, but your consciousness will live on. So, in a way, you'll still be alive forever. It's like that. It's making, like, AI out of us. I guess you could say. We call this event Transferred Consciousness, TC. If even the first part of the two terrorism hypotheses is shown to be true, the conscious analogs will be dependent persons with rights and obligations dependent on their capabilities. We're already getting into augmented rights and shit over here, too. Now, this is one thing that I've started to see crop up on the deep web, which we'll see a lot more of, is the idea of, like, transhumanism and shit like that. Like, like deus ex kind of stuff, you know what I mean? Like, people becoming robots and shit. Uh, cyborgs using implants and that kind of nonsense. I mean, it's a, it's, a, it's a direction, obviously, we as a society are kind of headed towards. Like, you know, one day it's going to happen. It's not like you're going to forget about it. You know, it's almost like the idea of having, like, say, the... Like, it, it's like, remember when Star Trek was a thing, right? And we saw people talking on, like, devices and shit. Now you can do that, right? With, like, Skype and Messenger and FaceTime and all that stuff. But now we're also seeing an environment where this kind of stuff is slowly becoming a reality, right? As medical science advances, as computer science advances, and those fields merge. But here we're going to go into, like, the about section and see what is TMF really about. This is the first time I'm hearing this. This is the Terrorism Movement Foundation, of course. The Terrorism Movement is a 501c3 non-for-profit private operating funding was founded in 2004 in Vermont, USA. You don't really hear about Vermont a lot. So, hey, represent. It is, uh, so wait, here we go. The HQ is 100% powered by the solar panels and 100% heated, cooled, uh, heated and cooled, if I can read right now tonight, by geothermal loop under pond, also powered by PV, thus net zero. <laughs> net zero. <laughs> what? <laughs> That's all, dude. TMF safe keeps mine files and biofiles of life knots for future revitalization in accordance with their consents and technologi technological advancements. So what they're doing right now is they're already downloading people's consciousness and storing it away. So when the technology comes, it, it'll, it, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll input it and boom, you apparently live forever. It's almost like cryogenics too. Like, I don't, I don't know. I've been following it, but like cryogenics goes on the belief that they'll freeze your body. And you know, when you freeze your body, you die, but they're going to keep your body frozen enough, I guess, to the point where. When medical science advances to the point one day, they'll be able to unfreeze your body without you dying or something like that. Even though as soon as your body freezes, you die. The idea of actual cryogenics is you slow your body down so much metabolically that you don't fucking age at all. You know what I mean? So you technically can live for thousands of fucking years even though you age but very, very slowly. 
but whatever, you know, I'm not a fucking, I'm not, I'm not an expert on this, okay, I, I don't, I, I don't freeze people for a living, so what the fuck, TMF's missions are missions is to promote the geoethical use of nanotechnology for human life extension, who, you know, the thing is, it's like, if we all had immortality, the world would be fucking ten times more overpopulated than it is right now, dude, Jesus fuck, what does geoethical mean? Geoethical means widely agreed upon principles for guiding the application of creative technologies that can have a general environmental, including impact, much like ethical principles, autonomy, benef beneficence, nonfeasance, justice, guide the application of creative technology. Okay, so what is nanotechnology? Nanotech is a branch of tech that deals with dimensions and tolerances of less than 100 nanometers, especially the manipulation of individual atoms and mole mo molecules. A nanometer is one billionth of a meter. Nanotechnology cuts across. Yeah, we know what nanotech is. The founders of terrorism are concerned with the potential of nanotech and related cyber consciousness for relieving human suffering and extending human life. So basically, what they want is to extend life, obviously, and using nanotechnology, they can input our consciousness into these AIs or these robots that will eventually one day in their mind become a thing. So they've got some projects. They, they're they actually self-funded, which at least it's interesting because, I mean, I could imagine a project like this. If you're if you're saving somebody's life, like in the sense that uh, you're, you're saving you're saving your, like somebody's mind to a fucking file, I could imagine that would be that would be something impressive. So here's a here's the board of directors. You got Martine Rothblatt. As far as I can see, are these people like really fucking trained and shit? This is no, they're doctors. Uh, Bina developed a project manager, Geostar World Space Beacon Projects and Lung RX. So they're act wow, they're they, they they actually have worked in many places. These aren't like random high school people that have fucking come together. No, these people actually have some pretty fucking badass credentials, to be honest. So it's it, it, it's it, it kind of backs up more of the stuff too. Like obviously you know it's not BS. Oh, wait a minute. Did I disconnect? Let me actually start up a backup record real quick, just in case something didn't work, right? Anyways, Bruce Duncan, M.E.D., which is a uh, managing director, Bruce Duncan over here. This is just, like, staff. And you go to, like, media, you can see that uh, yeah, they, they just have, like, actual, like, phases. and like So they have, like, Vimeo accounts. Or they're, like, launching a video. Jesus Christ. Uh, but they're showing dancing robots. They're basically, like, oh, my God, that's fucked up. You guys ever seen the Akiba Robot Festival? Actually, like... When you're done watching the video or whatever, open up another tab or something and check that shit out. It's actually fucking weird. Like, it, it's really fucking weird how advanced we've become from, like, the beep-beep-boop-boop boop robot stereotype to that shit. Anyways, moving over here, we got the science of TerraSim. And here they got the science supporting it. Like, all the neural microchip implantation, genetic research. Obviously, the science thing behind it, it, it isn't, like, dumb. Like, obviously, uh, obviously, one day this will become a reality. Though it's kind of a weird thing. I've never really seen this kind of stuff before. I thought it would come across this earlier, but no, damn, actually, no, not at all. One thing they also do is do the $100 laptop production. So I guess it's just for, like, you know, sending a laptop out to, like, you know, Africans or, like, you know, poor Indian communities or something like that, I assume, right? Or giving a laptop in every kid's lap, I guess, making them all write hate articles on fucking Reddit or some shit. I don't know. But that's the TerraSend movement. There's not much else about it. You go to another website called Life Not, which looks like a fucking Facebook network for you to build an avatar and shit. And apparently have it, well, right over here it says, you get the Biofile Project, which offers free DNA gene storage at a one-time cost of a biocollection kit, 99 USD for domestic US residents. Okay, all right, so it's a Facebook plus we store your jizz. All right, fair enough. I think we've seen enough of uh, uh, the, the TerraSem movement. Interesting movement. Obviously, their science is a lot more fucking grounded. But I have no care for making myself immortal. One day, I plan to also go in the dirt like many before me and uh, leave the story where that is. Let's fucking go to something kind of less depressing, actually. It's, now we're talking about death and shit, and I even went to one of those death cafe meetings. Fuck. Oh my god, blood runs black. My blood runs black. And such is life. Nice, you found my little place on the dark web. Did I? Did I find your place on the dark web? I guess you've all used to seeing sites advertising. Fake pills that will increase your dick size. Hackers that are willing and able to make... Actually, you're fucking right. There are so many sites like that on the dank web where that is a fucking reality. I will... 
back you up wholeheartedly on that, actually. There's so many fucking sites that are doing that. All right, anyways, yeah, fake pills that will increase your dick size, hackers that are willing and able to make the internet go black in its entirety, hitmen that will travel anywhere and commit a murder within a week's time, or sites that promise you to double your Bitcoin, and child pornography. Don't even get me started on that shit. Those sick fuckers need put to death. All right, dude. Okay. Oh, fuck me. I almost forgot to add in the infamous red rooms. For fuck's sake, how many millions I've spent on red rooms and never getting a fucking thing out of it? You must be a dumb, rich motherfucker to be putting millions of dollars into a fake scam. It's nice, though. I could have fed the poor with all those millions spent, but fuck them. Or butt fuck, not sure. Edgy, dude. Edgy. All right. If you believe any of that shit, I've got a bridge in Brooklyn for sale. Half off sale this whole week. First come, first fucked out of their money. All right, you hear that shit? All right, they they have a sale in Brooklyn for some fucking nice ass bridges. So if you're all if you're all up game for it, by all means, go down. Now my blood runs black, and such is life. That's God damn. There's an Evanescence song I could bring up over here, but that would be a joke gone too far. My rant, twenty seven May two thousand seventeen. Pretty fucking. Recent, actually. Yeah, well, not recent, but, you know. That's probably, that was around the time when I was, what, in, in Australia? No, it was like a week after I came back from Australia land, kangaroo land. My apologies if you think I give a fuck about anyone other than myself at this moment. I feel I have a good reason to not give my give much of a brown shit, or green for that matter. Let's rewind back to 2005. When I was a young lad, with a young son... And a baby baking in the oven, just waiting to spread the curtains wide, just to come into this shithole. Man, dude, why are we so nihilistic about this shit, dude? I was working for what I thought was a reputable country, company, not country, Mudahar, what the fuck is you reading right now? Doing typical daily shit that didn't do much, but bore the fuck out of me until one day I was asked by my managers to climb a storage rack and push down a heavy box. Pop! Was all I heard. It was my back. My disc between the my L5 S1 ruptured and instantly felt the adrenaline rush through my body. I was sore and stiff the remainder of the day and made it a point to let them know I'd hurt myself. I was told to keep an eye on it and let them know how I was feeling. The next day I woke up and couldn't even move. It wasn't like it's been before after a hard day's work. It was bad. The pain I felt shot from my back down to the calf was immense. I asked my wife to call my job and let them know that I was in a great deal of pain and couldn't make it. This continued on for a few days before I finally went to see the doctor. Oh, shit. Oh, but it doesn't go past that. What the fuck? Wait, my rants. Hold on. There's another one up there. This is kind of fucking depressing, dude. All right. I thought I was going to get in some emo fan fiction shit, but I want to know the story. What happened to his back? Oh, fuck me, dude. Dude, if the site's down, I swear to God, I'm going to cry. Oh, no, no. It's only actually just been updated to this point. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to make a mental note of this website just because I do want to read more about this shit. This is apparently another, like, deep web, like, sort of blog somebody's written, and it's actually by somebody that's pretty interesting, you know? It's like, I think, I think like, because QSummit right now isn't active at this moment in time, unfortunately, I think the site might be going through, like, maintenance or something, but I think I'm going to add this to, like, my watch later category, just because I kind of want to read more about this shit, too. Like, my blood runs black. I thought it was going to be an emo thing, but apparently we came across somebody's journal, and it's not uncommon for somebody to make a journal like this, like a completely anonymous one. You see it all the time on, like, other social networks, like Galaxy 2, if I'm not mistaken. So, yeah, this isn't weird to find, but it's interesting, dude. This dude had a fucked up back, and it continues. Is he paralyzed? Dude, I really hope this dude ain't paralyzed, man. Fuck. I'm going to cry if he's paralyzed. It's a fucking depressing-ass story, dude. Can we have some excitement right now? Something fun? God damn, dude. I'm learning about death and some dude's back going out. It's like a fucking depressing episode, man. What the hell? All right, ladies and gentlemen, if you can count the pixels on screen, we do have a Minecraft leaked footage. No, we actually have the deep web footage for this week available. This is about 25 seconds, much shorter than what I would consider to be my fucking average. But ladies and gentlemen, we have a 25-second deep web video, of course, as you can see. Uh, it's, it, it could pass off as Minecraft 2 gameplay, but uh, I'm going to be a little nice here and give it as much love and support as I can. And we're going to hit play and just see what we really come across. Obviously, we're going to ear destructive territories. I like it. Kids are swinging. I hate this kind of shit. Okay, 4737. What the f- Oh my god, I recognize that fucking text anywhere, dude. It's the same VHS tapes. Hold on. Let me see this. 
Now they got a bed. I think we... Oh, motherfucker! What the f... <coughs> Jesus Christ. That was... <coughs> that was uncalled for. Jesus. Hold on, we're gonna go back into that. What the hell was that face in the end? What the... You, oh, my God! All right, um, first of all, somebody's recording their screen. That's a guaranteed evident fact. Uh, 25 seconds of a lot of shit that I had to process through. One thing that I did not expect with a face, that was like the closest thing to a fucking screamer. But I think what beats it is like the Slender Man shit that we saw at one point. So first things first, kids are swinging. I hate this kind of footage beyond belief. I, I don't know why. I find it really, dis like, not disgusting, but like really like dark. And it's almost like unnerving. Because like, you got to think about it, like, I'm, if we go by the assumption that what we're seeing is real, it's some dude recording, like, children in a park with their mother over there. But, of course, obviously, I, I'm believing this is fake. Though, one thing to note is interesting, too, about it is that, like, as it's recorded off of, like, this screen, because you can tell by the bottom, like, the shift that's happening, this is, like, the, the, the effects on the VHS are added in so haphazardly. Like, they, they're obviously a filter done through, like, a very good filter, done through something like, say, After Effects. And over here, they got 4737F6C6. In fact, let me just full screen a little bit. Uh, this is like, uh, you know, they, they obviously got like a little hexadecimal code thrown over here. But if you go over here, they got 6C6964796167702C6C69647377. So they got like a bunch of codes. Now, of course, if we go back real quick, it seems like some of it, kind of changes no it doesn't no it's just like the uh, vhs filter sorry wait no it doesn't the vhs filter makes it look like it does or does it no no it's the vhs filter then it goes to like this like girl sitting on the porch and it says society is broken which is weird now i don't know if that's a girl or not look at the way it moves no that those are kids okay and then it cuts to a bed and then it's this fucking face that freaks me the fuck out. Like, look at that shit. Like, what am I fucking looking at? You know what I mean? It's like, it's like a Thomas the Tank Engine episode. Now I look at it, it's like got blackened eyes. It almost looks like, like really shit tier CGI, like old school shit. Now you got you are a puppet. Obviously, you know it's referring maybe to us as a society or something like that. And then you've got this stuff. This is weird. You can't obviously make it because of the over over bloom and like the the overexposure to the video, but it almost feels like I'm looking at. No, it's like you are a puppet. Hold on. Wait, what? Yeah, it's just you are a puppet. It's the vertical sinking that's uh, not up to par. But obviously, you got over here. It seems like what we're looking at is like like to me. If we go around over here, it looks like we're looking at. We got a face in the end, by the way, too. There's a lot of stuff that happens. The end is very loaded. So over here, you got a face, which I believe this might be from, like, some old TV show or something like that. But if I'm looking over here, for example, let me just full screen that. It almost looks like, just by, like, the bottom left, I'm looking at, like, fucking a bullet casing or something like that. But at the same time, by, like, the outline of some of this stuff, it looks like... Nail, nail clippers almost. It almost feels like I'm looking at like a set of nail clippers or some shit like that. So, you know, it could be a multitude of things to be honest, but whatever it is, it's just really unnerving as a video. And I don't know what else to really say other than what I gave. The analysis that I have over it is just that. It's, it's a set of videos that I believe is linked to an ARG that I can't pin down. Like, I cannot pin this thing down, but the, the wording on it reaches out to me because I recognize this font anywhere and I call I'm gonna call it like the I guess like awake or whatever because I remember it from the other videos where it had like the 12 clock face thing where it had like awake and then like all the words over there and I'm gonna link it to that but I need to see the whole thing because it's obviously far bigger than this but this is like a small set of videos that there's like a point in this video by the way too if you look over here if you listen to this it almost feels like the audio is kind of from a separate video clip too, just like how it cuts as well. I just tend to pick up on these things really quickly. But other than that, I'm going to sort of end this over here. I don't have much more analysis to give other than this is a very interesting arg, and I do want to check more on it. But uh, as time goes on, we'll find more, I hope. But for now, society is broken, and I almost got a little spookening from this, so... That's, that's just fucking weird. Holy shit. Anyways, let's back out and go to something else.
All right, four thieves vinegar. Make your own medicine. Ah, uh, the last thing you should be doing is telling people to go make their own fucking meds, all right? That's, that's not what you should be doing. A toast to the dead for children with cancer and AIDS. A cure exists, and you probably could have been saved. You know, that's like a whole conspiracy, too. Like, people are like, there's a cure for cancer and AIDS and diabetes and shit like that, but, like, all the big pharma companies won't fucking tell you because it costs, well, it, it makes more money to treat it than it would to cure it. And that's kind of true to an extent, right? Like, if you could obviously... If you could go up to somebody and give them the cure to cancer, then they, they'll they be fine. They won't ever, like, ask you for another drug again. But if you can choose to keep giving them, like, expensive drugs, same thing with people who have, like, HIV, which I believe it's a HIV becomes AIDS, right? Like, after a while, AIDS, if you gave them, you know, if you gave them the AIDS, like, what I know for people who have HIV or AIDS is they take, um, what is it, what the fuck is this drug called, Daraprim, Dara, Daraprim or something like that, they have to take that per day, it's like a fucking, you know, birth control pill almost, you gotta take it a day because it's like an immune booster, right, because what happens with HIV AIDS is that your immune system becomes basically defunct, so, you know, these people get fucking colds, you know, they're, 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 they're like on the verge of fucking death and shit. So, yeah, they, they basically have the stuff over here. Then they also have an EpiPencil, which is like an auto-injector, apparently. An epinephrine, an, ep, an, an, an epinephrine auto-injector. So what the fuck? Did we find a medical site? Like, what is this? Wait a minute. Download the MicroLab plans. So they're actually telling you plans on how to download and brew your own drugs? Download the outline for Daraprim. <gasps> oh, shit. Oh, dude, that is it. Wait, so he's telling you the recipe and the outline for the drug that people need for HIV and AIDS, and he's just handing that out for free. And obviously, I'm not going to show that because Daraprim is a licensed drug. There is apparent right now. There is no like uh, what what do they call those things? Generic for it at this point. Like it's still like patented and shit. So I can't show you this fucking concoction because. Yeah, I could, I could get fucking, I, I could get sent to the, to the, to the fucking sue, suing house for that shit. I ain't doing that nonsense. But that's actually really noble of this individual. You know, instead of paying money up the ass to insurance companies, he's just handing it out. Now, of course, do I recommend you brew your own drugs? Fuck no. All right, don't do that because th there's a reason why these are made in very careful laboratories. All right, too much of something could kill you. Too little of something does fuck all. The right amount is what you need. So the mission that they have is, yeah, they call themselves the Four Thieves. And then here, here's, I think this is the individual that's telling you how to torrent pharmaceutical drugs or something, which is interesting. Free medicine for everyone. People are disenfranchised from access to, this is their mission, for medicine for various reasons. Circumvent these, we have developed a way for individuals to manufacture their own medications. We have designed an open source automated lab reactor which can be built with off the shelf parts and can be set to synthesize different medicines. This will save hundreds and thousands of lives. The main reason for people being disenfranchised from medicines are price, legality, and lack of infrastructure. Medicines like Solvati, which costs $80,000 for a course of treatment, really? I didn't know that, is beyond the reach of most people. Yeah, nobody's gonna fucking. Dude, most people make like less than half that a fucking year. Mif mif mifepristone mif and misoprostol. I think my dad needs to fucking be here for this episode. He's a doctor. And unavailable in many places where abortion is illegal. Oh, that th those are pills that, like, fucking scramble your from the insides? Anti-retroviral HIV treatments, even when provided free, have no way to getting to remote locations. In third yeah, it's easier to get it treated in America than, say, you know, fucking India or something. That also, if you're, like, in a country like Saudi Arabia where I believe HIV, like, treatment is free because of how people can get HIV over there is, like, looked down upon and shit. The design will be published online along with synthesis programs. The system will also have a forum users to communicate. So they actually have a fucking noble cause. Now, of course, is what they're doing breaking the law? I believe it is, you know. But at the same time, like, morally... They're, like, trying to save lives. You know how people say the deep web is, like, full of horrible, depraved shit? This, sites like this I love because it shows that people over here 
are doing the right fucking thing, and at least at least they have moral backing in their you know spines and shit. So what is this? Doctor Lofer isn't a medical doctor, is he? No, he isn't. His auto refers to doctorate of mathematics. However, let it be clear, we are not trying to take the place of doctors. We are merely trying to grant access to medicines to people who do not have it. It is incumbent upon people to make their own decisions as to do what they want to put in their bodies. Yeah, so if somebody wants to fucking do meth all the time, hey, by all means, go for it as long as you ain't hurting anybody. Do you have doctors in any of your teams? We do have medical professionals with various degrees, yes. Most of them are consults for food medicines we most need to create synthesis programs for so that we can direct our efforts where they are. So what they've done is, if I'm not mistaken, they are creating like a 3D printer for medicine which can help a lot of people. That's really nice, actually. That's kind of fucking tear-bringing, to be honest. It's a good thing. Won't people use the wrong things and hurt themselves? There is indeed a risk. However, it already happens every day with both prescriptions and over-the-counter medications. We are convinced that access to medications will do more good than harm. Yeah, you know, people can abuse medications over-the-counter, and sometimes the shit they make in a lab isn't exactly the most perfect. Won't people use this technology to produce narcotics? It's unlikely the tools capable of small-scale production only and does not scale up. It is not something a drug lab would get much use out of. Yeah, they're typically making... They're, they wouldn't even get something like this. They'd just make it in, like, bulk, no matter how fucking dirty the product might be. What about poisons? Uh, again, unlikely. Doesn't giving people free reign on medic medication endanger the public health, like the overprescription of antibiotics creating antibiotic-resistant strains of bacteria? If someone is sufficiently ill, then they take the pains to build an apothecary microlab and synthesize the drug, which would give them relief. It's unlikely that they would fa uh, then fail to be vigilant about completing the course of their medication. That, that is pretty true. Aren't you stealing from the patent holders? No, we are, you are violating their copyright, yes. And at best, you might be decreasing their profits if you are making it yourself instead of buying it for them. However, anybody who is sufficiently desperate that they build in a micro lab and is clearly in a situation where they not be able to afford to buy the medication in the first place. That is pretty true, man. Like you said, 80 grand to run that fucking course? That's a lot of fucking money, dude. If you don't have the money for that shit, like, what, do you just give up and die? No. <laughs> That's fucked, you know? That's, that really is fucked. So you're going to have, like, more downloads, obviously. And the thing with downloads is just, like, instructional packets for their Epi pencils, and, of course, a Daraprim packet and the other molecules and whatnot. Now, of course, I don't know if they have a place where you can build the drug. Like, oh, wait, up here it is. This is the actual product they have, the, uh, the micro lab plan. So this will actually teach you how to create the lab yourself. You can download a direct or download a torrent. Now, I'm going to back out of this because I'm sure if I open up some of this stuff, I might be breaking some form of fucking legality by showing you possible uh, medical like uh, outlining. That wouldn't be right. So what I'm going to do is, obviously I've shown you a site where there is a good thing to it, and at the end of the day, it is kind of heartwarming to see some good being done. You know, it's not all hitman's doom and gloom hackers and whatnot and dead people in red rooms. Sometimes it's people just trying to help anybody who's you know, dying of fucking cancer or some shit. So, at the end of the day, good shit. Today was a good day, I gotta say. This website made my day. We're gonna go back out and see something else. What the hell is this? Message from the Designers, a book which is literally out of this world. Download and read it for yourself! Alright, see, now we're reaching, like, the BuzzFeed levels of fucking shit. Alright, what if, out of the thousands of UFO sightings that occur each year, motherfucker, I was reading that, well, one person actually met the occupant, the driver of one of these UFOs. I like to think that UFOs are just like space truckers and shit. And they, they just don't care if the humans see them. They're like, fuck, I, got, I gotta get home. I gotta deliver this fucking space crack and be done with my life. What if this person was given information by the space being that explained the secret history of life on Earth and its pending future? Because, you know, all fucking UFOs in space would probably just carry that shit around with them. Yeah, make sure you have a copy of Earth's history. That is important shit. All right, we don't we we don't want to just go across light years without that. That is very important. How fucking full of yourself do you have to be to think that they would just do? That's fucking stupid. Who would wouldn't you want to read such a book? You can download it now. Uh, I don't want to download some viruses. At the age of twenty seven, Claude Verohan, Ver Verohan, also known as Ryle, was living his passion as a race car driver and journalist. Vroom vroom. That was to change on December 13, 1973. Well, on his way to work, he had the UFO encounter that transformed his life forever. From the day forward, he has toured the world recounting his astonishing experiencing experiences in media interviews and conferences. Listen to Ryle as he describes in detail what he lived that day. Uh, we'll go next. 
Uh, during his extraterrestrial encounters, Ryle discovered a series of messages that touch on all aspects of human life. Whether your interest lies in ancient history, modern science, UFOs, religious scriptures, or even sci-fi, you'll gain new perspective from taking your time to read them. All right, so basically, Ryle would like to tell you that a UFO flew into his area, and uh, they gave him the history of Earth. Now, apparently it says meet Rylans, so the International Rylian Movement. What it is, it's a religious fucking cult movement is what we've come across. All right, people, so we're, we're going to go into the message real quick, read what the message is. For centuries, scholars have been debating the two main possibilities of the origin and meaning of life. Some aspire to be uh, a higher philosophical dimension where they can't find it in the theory of evolution. All right, while others dismiss it as irrational, any uh, irrational, any reference to an almighty God. But what if another theory, one both rational and with philosophical depth, were to be available? This is what the message proposes. Thousands of years ago, scientists from another planet came to Earth and created all forms of life, including human beings, whom they created in their own image. References to these scientists and their work can be found in the ancient texts of many cultures. Due to their highly advanced technology, they were referred to as gods by our primitive ancestors and often referred to as Elohim, which in ancient Hebrew meant those who came from the sky. Despite being a plural... You know what? Sometimes, like, I wonder. Like, obviously, I'm going to sound kind of a like a religious nut job or, like, like, like a nut job in general. But sometimes I like to think that maybe we did fucking come from aliens in the sky. You know, maybe we were doctored or engineered in some way. That would explain why people, you know, mention God a lot, right? You know, what, what if that was the case? Like, then, then people would have their logical uh, elements... And there and everything combined, right? Like sometimes I wonder, cause, cause obviously humans back in the day wouldn't be as smart as we are now. Well, smart in the sense that they wouldn't have a worldview like we do. So maybe, maybe that could be the case. I don't know. I'm gonna back out of it. But like things such as those who came from the sky, it's like, I don't know. It kind of leads me to that line of thinking. But you know, at the end of the day, I'm I'm a fucking engineer. I don't really focus on this shit. But despite being a plural world, Elohim was mistranslated over time to the singular God reference that appears in modern-day Bibles. Nevertheless, these people who came from the sky, the Elohim, educated humanity through the ages with the help of various messengers, also called prophets, with whom they had made contact. Each messenger was given a message suitable for the level of understanding, prevailing at the time with the primary purpose of instilling basic principles of nonviolence and respect. Once humanity reached a sufficient level of scientific understanding, the Elohim decided to make themselves more visible in UFO sightings and to conceive their final message. Ryle was given two messages, spread the last message on Earth and prepare an embassy to welcome the return of our creator. Creators. The atheist intelligent design theory offers a rational solution to the age-old debate between God-believers and evolutionists. It's compatible with not only today's science, so yeah, that's probably the debate on it too, but, uh, yeah, I think, I think sometimes, like, if I'm, like, if I'm really thinking, that, that's what comes to my mind, but, you know, we're gonna go into it, alright, obviously it's a lot different than, like, some of the other cult websites we've seen, I think this one is a little more, like, normal, <laughs> I would say, you know, it's not like everyone's sucking off rail, but, uh, again, here's, here's Ryle, or whoever he wants to call, the creator of the Raelian movement, uh, if we go to the FAQ, let me go down over here. Who created the Elohim? If we believed in God, we might ask who created God. If we believed in evolution and the Big Bang, we might ask where did this energy and matter come from? Yeah, you're just going a step above, all right? You, you're just asking what begins, what happens first, right? Anyway, let's go to the embassy. The Rileyan Movement is a nonprofit international organization. Yeah, like, like most religious movements, right? It, uni it unites those who wish to inform humanity of its true origins and tell people about the very me special messages sent by the Elohim. I hope you don't come to my house at 10 o'clock or 9 o'clock in the morning, wake me up on a Saturday, and tell me, can we please tell you the amazing uh, wor words of the Rileyan movement? Because I'll fucking be pissed, dude. I'll give you a golden shower in the morning, dude, if you fucking come to my place at 9. What triggered me to say that? I'm recording this late at night. Those who wish to inform humanity and tell people about the very special messages sent by the Elohim. Highly advanced extraterrestrial scientists who created life on Earth, including human beings. But spreading this knowledge is not only the goal of the Rileyan movement. Another primary mission of our organization is to prepare an official embassy to welcome the return of our creators through their messenger, Ryle. The Elohim have respectfully expressed a desire to come and meet us. Have they really? Have you talked to the Elohim? If my camera could work properly. Not die on me when I'm in the middle of a tangent. 
The embassy would become the third temple, as predicted in the ancient scriptures. According to specifications provided by the Elohim, it must be built in a neutral location that have been granted rights of extraterritoriality and grant guaranteed neutral airspace. Providing such an embassy and obtaining the necessary guarantees for its rights and occupants will prove that humanity is ready for an official meeting with its creators. The Rileyan movement recently asked a number of countries to consider hosting the embassy project, and several have indicated an interest in allocating space for such an endeavor. You know, what, did you go to fucking Russia and ask them, yeah, we have a bunch of uninhabitable land, set your shit up there, don't worry, we won't charge you or anything, it's not like we can fucking use the land, what did that happen? I could, I could not see this going by the United States and them saying, yeah, we'll, we'll, give, you, we'll give you the one state that we don't use, you can have that, that that's your neutral ground. You might as well fucking ask, like, I don't know, you might as well just ask some nation in Africa that has just land to fucking spare. Do that shit, dude. Uh, events, so they have, like, events over here. 2017, 2018, they have an event coming up, by the way. Actually, this is, like, the next events that are coming up. So they had the African Happiness Academy in Burkina Faso. European Happiness Academy. What the fuck is a happening? What? What is a Happiness Academy? Uh, Ryle has given key information about a better one's life. He has taught the information. Oh, so it's like a fucking sermon is what it is. Uh, meditation seminar in Corindo, Narita, Japan. Let me actually book a flight out there, man. I'm going to go. I'm going to join this shit. Hell yeah, dude. No, actually, I can't. No, not at all. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to go to fucking Narita just to fucking, you know, join a meditation seminar. Riley and seminars of Central, Kama, Africa in Obd- in, o- in Odziba. Basically, he travels the fuck around. Now, people follow him on Facebook and, and Twitter, it seems. Like, 30,000 people like him on there. So, you know, he's definitely fucking popular. You go to their shop. The shop has a, the shop has a square JPEG for sale. <laughs> if you go to the Contact Us, they actually are in Switzerland, in Geneva, right there. They actually decided to, they actually decided to go there. Find your nearest Riley movement by selecting your continent. Yeah, uh, Americas, there you go. Uh, Americas, let me actually find it. If I can find one, dude, I'll actually go to it. Canada. Oh, the Canadian Rileyan movement, which is in Sucursale, uh, Uville, Montreal. That Oh, dude, Montreal. Is anybody up for me? If I, if I drive five hours to go to Montreal? Dude, I could see a Rileyan movement. Fuck, they don't have one in Toronto, dude. Fuck me in the ass. They have a website there. You can check out the Canadian movement. What about the ones in America? Wait, let me check USA. Las Vegas, Nevada. Fuck. If it would have been down to like Ohio or like Michigan or something, mm, I could have went down there. Or I could, or I, or you know what? I, I could just book a flight to Las Vegas and see. Damn, man. That would have been dope if I had seen the Rileyan movement, but maybe I might, maybe I might one day, no promises, go to Montreal and show you guys the Rileyan movement. Go inside it or something. Do they have one in Argentina? They have it in Chivilcoy, uh, Provincia de Buenos Aires. I should ask Amaro where that is. Amaro could go for me, I hope. I'll pay him too. Anyways, that being said, I, I, don't, I don't know if there's much more for me to check on the Neuralian movement. It's just a movement for these people to sp- spread the word that aliens created us and that they're coming back and they're sending us a final text message. Uh, that message could be KYS or come join us for light speed travel. It could be anything. But whatever it is, we'll find out when that time comes. I'm going to go to the next site. And ladies and gentlemen, that's another episode of Deep Web Browsing, episode number 110. We actually took a little more analytical uh, approaches on a lot of the websites offered. A little less website, uh, well, one less, I think, than usual. I keep it at six now. But I think I spent a lot of time per website, which I do like this approach a lot because I'd rather look at the websites more than just give them like a four-minute like subsurface uh, glance. That being said, I'm going to ask you what you think about the episode, what you really like about it. I'm going to back out of this and just leave it where it's at. If you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Just like it if you dislike it. We saw some interesting stuff today. Some of the stuff was depressing. Some of the stuff was... We found a cult that, at least to me, seems a little more grounded in reality. But other than that, we're going to back off and uh, check other shit out. So yeah, this is me, Mudahar, and uh, I'm out.